But first, we start the show with a question. How do you catch a thief? Or more specifically, how do you catch illegal poachers? Ah, that is exactly the challenge faced by the government of Ecuador. They're trying to protect one of the richest natural wonders on the planet, the Galapagos Islands. Luckily for the sharks and other wildlife there, that challenge is being tackled with sophisticated aerial spies. The waters of the Galapagos are beautiful and vast, bursting with marine life. The top predators of this ecosystem predate the dinosaurs by 150 million years. Sharks have survived five major extinctions, but are now under threat as a result of thinning. Fortunately, all this is going to change. The skies over the Galapagos will soon be patrolled by an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, called the Piquero, the ultimate eye in the sky, or ecocop. Picaro is about, first about conservation. The, the Galapagos Islands has a, a terrible problem with, with poaching. The name Picaro is the, is the Spanish uh, name given to the blue-footed booby. So it's a funny bird name for us. Picaro is probably a much nicer name. And uh, the students really developed the name Picaro. Unlike military drones, the Picaro will be completely autonomous. It will be able to take off, follow a flight path, and land on its own without a runway. Constructing a plane that flies itself is a challenge. Every component has to be tested thoroughly. We're testing a sister plane to the Bicaro, and probably the best way to describe it is when a pilot learns to fly, they don't always learn to fly in the aircraft that they'll end up flying, but the, the, a pilot is the critical component. And so what we're testing today really for the Bicaro project is the autopilot and vision system, the eyes of the plane, and the ability to fly the plane autonomously. It's the same electronic system in the aircraft today that flew as the one that's going to be built down in Quito. So the platform is different, but the electronics is the same. Two teams are collaborating on this ambitious project. Faculty and students of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida, and the University of San Francisco in Quito, Ecuador. The teams meet every week via video link. Can you uh, show us how far you've gotten with a plane. Okay, so basically the airplane is ready and fully assembled. We have a few components left. We have the engine, the installation, almost ready. We have to test the engine first in Quito due to the altitude. Behind, we have the electronic component bay where the batteries, the communication system, and the autopilot are placed. The uh, islands of the Galapagos are volcanic, and the terrain is very rough. It's a crossroads of uh, ocean currents and, and air currents. Snorri Goodmanson is, the, uh, is one of the world's great uh, aircraft designers, and uh, Snorri's been really the lead in helping us put the aircraft together, but we'll have to launch it over short distances, land in short distances, so we'll have to have good control of the airplane. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty special problem we're trying to solve. From a certain point of view, it's a maneuverable glider. It has a high aspect ratio wing and is, is designed to consume very little fuel in a long time. You effectively have to think about the airplane is nothing but a platform to carry a camera for a long time over the ocean. How many hours of test time do you have now on the test? Not being in one location means each group tests different components using substitute aircraft and flight simulators. The simulator is a very important part of the development program because it allows us to test the airplane, test the handling of the airplane. Um, how responsive is it? How busy is the autopilot going to be uh, when it is directed to make turns and necessary heading changes? The Picero will have a flight time of 12 to 16 hours and will have a cruising speed of 40 to 50 kilometers an hour. It will carry a lot of fuel, and once all of that fuel is consumed, from an aerodynamic standpoint, it's, it's almost a different airplane because of the, of the inertia has changed so much that it will behave very differently immediately after takeoff and just before landing. And it's really nothing that we don't think we can handle. How the plane handles itself is one of the challenges. The low speeds will not only be good for fuel consumption, but will also help provide steady video data, which could help catch poachers. Currently now, the way that the data would be transmitted would be, a would be a human viewing the images and determining whether there was something of interest. Ultimately, what we'd like to have it be is more automated so that the aircraft itself could make decisions that this is something of interest and then send that directly to somebody to look at as well. As you see, the aircraft itself is very, very light. It's only made out of styrofoam and plastic for the most part. We were able to see that the data transmission was working. It was responding to his controls. Uh, it handled exactly as it was supposed to. It was beautiful to watch that plane fly today. It really was. The waters of the Galapagos form an area the size of Bangladesh. That's twice the area of New Brunswick. That's a lot of space to cover. 
The airplane needs to be inexpensive to make, maintain, and fly. In the end, we'll have perhaps 30 of these Picaro planes flying, and the labor required to, to fly that many would be too great. So these planes will be autonomous. We will make the imagery that the planes are gathering available online. So somebody in New York City or Singapore will be able to log on any time of the day or night, uh, see what the airplane is seeing, and that brings awareness. It's a collaborative effort between two different universities trying to save sharks from illegal poachers, leveraging not only technology, but leveraging passion and concern, stewardship for the, for the environment, and, and thinking beyond your, your own immediate needs, but actually for something that's, that's bigger than ourselves. It's just an amazing, amazing project that way. The Picaro project will likely take another year before it's complete. And until then, the two teams will be working hard to bring the Picaro to life.